The purpose of this lab is to show you how to use PTADA software uh, to model and simulate the growth of a pine plantation here in the U.S. South and to use that to help you make decisions on what your prescription for pine plantations will be and on how to predict growth into the future. So you see here the Virginia Tech Forest Modeling Research Cooperative website for PTAIDA. They've developed this software. Um, the software has been around for decades. It's been updated a few times. And so you're, you're able to download a demo version here with limited capabilities. Um, and you can see on here, you can buy this software if you would like. It looks like the current price is $295 with information on how to purchase it. Fortunately, you don't need to purchase this for this lab we're doing today. Uh, we bought a site license some time ago, and this is available on all of our GIS lab computers here in the Forestry Building. Uh, so find a time when you can access a GIS lab computer within the Forestry Building, and you will have access to this program that I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, if you Google Virginia Tech PTAIDA, you'll find this page. Um, you can also find this user manual within the PTAIDA software. But this user manual, it's probably more detailed than what most of you are, are interested in, uh, but it has a lot of great information on how this model was created and what exactly this model does. And so I'm scrolling here to the abstract and you can see here, it's telling you that PTAIDA is an individual tree growth and yield model. And so because it's an individual tree model, what it's actually modeling is a 25 tree by 25 tree grid. And based on a lot of real stands that these researchers were able to coordinate the measurement of uh, southwide, they're able to use that real data and a lot of different mathematical procedures to predict how many trees will die, uh, where would we expect that to occur, how will the trees grow, how will their, their crowns differentiate from one another, how big will they get? And what effect will all these different treatments like thinning, fertilizer, pruning have on the trees? Um, this model also has some uh, economic features built into it. We're not gonna use those this semester, um, but you may be interested in using those uh, later in our program. For example, when you get to the forest management plans course. Um, so let me exit out of Google Chrome here where we're looking at some background on the PTADA model. Um, and let me show you the model itself. So here's the PTAIDA model. And so as you are, you know, on one of our lab computers, just uh, navigate down to P for PTAIDA in uh, the programs list, um, or simply in the search bar, type in PTAIDA and this will come up. And so there are two primary things that we can do with this software. We can grow a stand that doesn't exist yet, or we can grow a stand that does currently exist yet. Um, as with any program, you're able to save your work. Here you can save it. It'll save as a .ptt file, uh, which you can then open up again in PTAIDA. So I'm going to start off first by growing a stand that does not yet exist. And I'm going to do that by using this initialize button up here at the top. So I'm going to click that I. And this brings up our four tabs, our main input model. This is how we're going to run the model. So this is the input portion. So if I select new stand over here on the left on the stand information tab, it'll grow a new stand from scratch. It's simulating a cutover site, not an old field. I can also select existing stand over here on the right by switching to this toggle and putting this information over here. And that'll take it where I can take a stand like the one we were on for lab last week and I can get that growing over a period of time. So I'm gonna start with a new stand first, okay? And I'm gonna tell you the site index, I'm gonna plug in a random number here, so 65. And this is always gonna be feed and it tells you the base age is 25 years there. This is a very useful graphical user interface uh, in that it prevents you from making a lot of mistakes. So watch, I'm gonna hit okay to start the model right now but I haven't told it everything it needs to know. So it, it gives me a, hey dummy, fix this little warning here. So it tells me I need to enter an integer. And when I click okay, I see the cursor flashing here in rota rotation length. So I have an input of rotation length. Here's uh, one important thing that I like to do when I use this software. It will not let you exceed the rotation length. So if I don't know my rotation length yet, I put a number that's bigger than anything I feasibly am gonna use. I'm going to plug 50 in there. 
I wouldn't recommend using this model up to 50 years old because the data that it's based upon wasn't a bunch of 50 year old stands. It was younger pine plantations. And so, you know, the output, it'll give you output, but it probably isn't the best output when you carry it out that far. Okay, here's another useful thing with this model, the grow to age. Um, for the most part, it's difficult to move backwards in time in this model. So if I put in five years and then I decide I want to do something at three years, it's difficult to go back once you've grown the stand out to five. You could grow the stand a year at a time if you want. That's just going to create a lot more output than you really need. But be kind of conservative on that grow to age. Grow it to a younger age than you think you'll want to be applying treatment. I can put in a title. So if you're doing the HGT stand uh, for this lab, I could type in HGT there. I'm gonna type in, you know, demo right here. So I know uh, that this was the demo stand we're working on. And I could tell it how much percent hardwood I have here. And then since I'm starting a new stand, I can either tell it how many trees per acre I have, 800 there. Um, and you can see what it's doing is it's giving me a whole foot spacing. And so you can see it manipulating that on this little diagram here. Um, so for this stand, why don't we go to 12 by 10 and that tells me it's 364 trees per acre. You can see this is one of four tabs. This is my stand information tab. I have three other tabs. This economic parameter tab is very useful, but again, for the purposes of our course for silviculture, we're not really getting into a lot of economics with specific numbers yet. Um, you'll get into that more later in the curriculum. So for today, we're going to ignore this economic parameters tab, but it is a, it is a good, very helpful tab there. Next up, I'm going to click merchandising options and limits. Um, this tells you what your product specs are for local mills and what units you want to work in. So you could run this model in cords and board feed and cubic feet. We're going to run it in tons. We've been doing most things in tons per acre this semester. We're going to stick with that. Um, if you had utility poles, you could tell it what percentage they were of your total saw timber there. Um, we're going to leave that blank and then I'm going to check add top wood from chip and saw saw timber classes into pulp wood. And then what I can do is I can manipulate the size of saw timber here and you can see it's changing my markings on my tree as I do this. I can manipulate the size of my chip and saw trees here. I can manipulate the size of my pulp wood trees if I want. Look in the handout for lab and it will tell you the exact specs we're going to use. Don't use what I've just input unless that's what the handout says. Next up, I'm going to go to my site information tab. Okay. And so you can tell whether the site's been chopped and burned. And so most of our stands have not been roller chopped anymore. This is an older prescription we don't use very frequently. Um, shear and pile is going to be moving slash around and piling it up. Uh, disking is going to be like agricultural plowing for shallow compaction. And bedding is going to be raising the soil into mounds so that the seedlings don't drown. And so you can also select none of them. You can select herbaceous weed control for one or two years here. So one year is going to be pretty common on a lot of our stands. You can choose whether we're in the Piedmont or the Coastal Plain. Almost all of East Texas except far Northeast Texas is in the Coastal Plain. So we're going to be using the Coastal Plain on pretty much everything. You can tell whether your stand is well drained or poorly drained, and then you can fertilize it at establishment with various nutrients or choose not to fertilize it at establishment. So those are your different site information options. Okay, so I've input everything now, at least I think. It'll tell me if I've made an error. I'm going to grow this out to age 10, you can see here, so I'm going to click OK. All right, now what we're moving on to, you can see where I typed in the title of my stand demo. It put that up in the corner there for me. And what it's showing me, this is a stand and stock table at age 10. It may not look like the stand and stock tables you've used in other courses like biometrics, but it's a perfectly valid way to display a stand and stock table. Now, when you look at this data, you can see I have 27 tons of total wood. That's gonna be tons per acre. All this data, unless area is irrelevant, like tree height area has nothing to do with that, but all this data where area is relevant, number of trees, basal area, and tonnage, it's all trees per acre, basal area per acre, or tons per acre. All this data is on a per acre basis already. It's telling me a few things about my trees. It's giving me different diameter classes. It's telling me how many trees I have in those diameter classes, how tall they are, what their basal area is, 
and then my volume in pulp would ship and saw in saw timber. Now, if we look at this, I'm looking at this bottom row. Notice how five and a half tons chip and saw plus 17.2 tons pulp wood, that adds up to 23.7 tons. But notice my total tonnage is more than that. Keep in mind that total tonnage may include non-merchantable material. And so for our lab today, we're not gonna use this total column. If you wanna include it, that's fine. But what we're concerned with is merchantable. So to get merchantable volumes today, you'll need to add up pulp wood, chip and saw, and saw timber, add those three numbers, and that will be the merchantable volume relevant to whatever that row is on the table. Okay, so we've done this, but let's say you're looking at this and you're thinking to yourself, I can't remember if I changed my merchandising options, my pulp wood top size to the right number or not. I can go view and I can click show inputs. And it gives me a bunch of additional information here where now I can look, here's my pulp wood top diameter four. I can double check that and make sure it's correct. So you can check all your inputs there. And if you don't want that in there, just you know get rid of show inputs right here. Okay, so one other useful thing you're gonna do with this information is you may not wanna save it in PTAIDA. You may wanna save it in Microsoft Excel so you can import it into Word. And so it's just a better file format that's more flexible for you. You have Office on your computer, you don't have PTAIDA. So if all you do is save these PTT files, you can't go open this up on your own computer later. So I'm opening up Excel here. Now here's one trick here when I've got them both here. I'm gonna right click this to try and copy it. So if you're used to right clicking and copying, thinning is not available. It's saying I can't do that. So I'm gonna use a uh, shortcut here. I'm holding the control button and I'm clicking C. Control C is what allows me to copy. And that's true on any uh, Microsoft machine. And then I'm gonna paste it here. You can right click and paste. I'm gonna use shortcuts again. And I'm gonna hold down control and hit V. And what you'll notice, you can see I didn't highlight the column headers, but it copied them for me anyway. And so when I look at my Excel spreadsheet, they came through here. Okay, so now we need to fix this up a little bit. Uh, so it's gonna file our, follow our lab style guidelines. So you can see there's a few issues in here where this one, I may need to merge and center that. Uh, so I get it going over all of them. And then I need to make sure that my variable names and units are good. Um, and so here I've got DBH and the units on that are inches. Well, what's my number of trees? That's gonna be my stand density. And my units on that are trees per acre. Okay, I've got my stand average height here for each size class, so that's gonna be my height. And my units on that are feet. And then I've got my basal area here, and I know my units on that are feet squared per acre. Um, and with my square feet per acre, I'm gonna type my two in there. I'm gonna highlight it, and I'm gonna go to my font dropdown, and I'll be able to superscript that so it looks better than just inputting a carrot in there. Looks like I subscripted it, but we can fix that easily enough. Let me do that. And superscript, not subscript. All right, hopefully these drilling noises aren't too distracting. They're installing hand sanitizers in the uh, bathrooms near my office, looks like. Okay, so we need to continue to fix up a few units and we know green with bark is good, but you need to tell it that it's tons per acre, not just tons. Um, so then on this simple little table, of course, I can add my borders above. I can add my one border below my header row there, and then I can add my border here on the bottom and I've got all this, I can save it in Excel. And then when you go to do the lab uh, for this week, uh, what you'll be able to submit is a Word document where you've taken this um, and you've pasted all this into Excel. And so here now I can highlight everything here, copy and paste it, and I've got it right here in Word. And so now that I've got it in Word, I can, you know, Word's always gonna mess up your formatting a little so you can fix anything it breaks, hopefully. You can see it's messed up this column here. <laughs> but once you fix that, you'll be able to go ahead and type a table caption on it and put all your table caption stuff there. Um, so that's uh, how you're gonna be getting data out of this PTATA model for this week. Okay, so as we look at the model more, <clears throat> what you'll be able to see is we've got the stand and stock table. So let's start looking at how we interpret this. 
um, I can look at this data and I can make a decision on can I thin this stand or not. So if I third row thin a stand, I'm going to cut down a third of the trees. So if I third row thin this stand, but I didn't cut any other trees, the logger would be harvesting a third of 17, so a little less than six, plus a third of five and a half, so a little less than two. The logger would only be getting less than eight tons per acre. No logger's going to bid on a job that only gives them eight tons per acre. In our area, under almost all conditions, especially considering uh, that this is a lot of small, 291 small pulpwood trees per acre. Um, and so looking at this, it does not suggest that this stand is yet ready to thin. There's a few other ways you can look at this data, depending on whether you're a more visual person or not. Um, I'm going to click this T button at the top. Uh, I told you this software is modeling a 25 tree by 25 tree grid. And here you see that 25 by 25 tree grid. I can hold my mouse over an individual tree. So I'm holding it over a tree here and it's telling me the DBH on this tree is seven and a half. The tree's 38 feet tall, HGT. And then CR, live crown ratio is 64%. Um, you have other trees on here that have already died. And so you can actually look at what the model is doing if you're a more visual person. Um, I'm not gonna try it right now, but you can also, this software links into the stand visualization system, which if it's working right, it's produced by the US Forest Service. It can provide you a little three-dimensional sort of wire graphic of what your forest would look like. Uh, it looks like computer animation from maybe the late 1990s. So, Okay, so this is my stand right now. Pay attention to this growing season's completed line. That's going to be really important because that's telling you how old your stand is um, at that particular stand and stock tape. Now, what do I do next? Let me go to this button that has a big G on it. That's my mid-rotation treatment um, button. And so I can grow the stand with this button. <clears throat> so here's where I can thin the stand. But remember, we just said this isn't ready to thin yet. So let me just grow it out to age 15. So I'm typing grow plantation to age 15, okay. And now you can see one more stand and stock table has appeared in my window. Age 15, and now I can see I have 21 tons of pulpwood, 25 tons of chip and saw, seven tons of saw timber. So if I'm gonna remove a third of those, it's about seven tons of pulpwood, it's about eight tons of chip and saw, it's a couple tons of saw timber per acre. That's starting to look more attractive to a logger, so we may be able to commercially thin this stand now. So let's look at how we can commercially thin the stand in the software. And it all works through this mid-rotation treatment button G here. So I'm going to thin the stand by checking this thin option. Um, almost all the thins I'm going to use are going to be this row and low thin option, because that's the option most similar to what we actually do in the woods where they'll cut down access rows every so many rows. And then going down there, they will also harvest trees in the rows they've left up, but they'll harvest the small trees or the poorly formed trees. Okay, and so if I try to do that, watch, it's gonna tell me I have an input a few things. Please enter an integer from two to 25. I need to tell it my row interval right here. You could do a second row thin, no one does that commercially. You could do a one, or, you know, an every 25th row thin. No one does that commercially. Third row, fourth row, and fifth row are your most common options. I'm gonna fifth row thin this stand. And then I can hit okay again, see what it does. Oh, look, I need to enter a low thinning type. So I need to tell it if I'm low thinning by diameter or basal area. We're gonna use basal areas. So right now I can look behind me, I can see my stand has gotten up to 99 square feet per acre of basal area. Realistically, would I be thinning this stand at only 99 square feet per acre? Probably not. Uh, but let me see if I can go ahead and thin it back to 70 square feet per acre. Um, you're typically looking at somewhere between 60 and 80 square feet as common targets. Okay, now I've entered everything I need. I'm going to go ahead and generate the thinning reports by checking this little toggle here. And then I'm going to put a grow to age. It's currently 15. I'm going to grow it out to 20. Now, here's a common mistake people make with this window. This works like you read. It works from left to right. So if I click all this thinning stuff, remember my stand is 15 years old right now. That means that it is going to thin my stand at age 15, <clears throat> excuse me, and then it's gonna grow my stand out to age 20, okay? And so don't think that it's been, gonna be growing my stand five more years than thinning it at age 20, okay? Um, there are fertilizer options here too, where you can fertilize with so many pounds of nitrogen per acre, you can apply phosphorus or not, so that's an option as well. We're not going to get into the pruning option here today. 
So let me fit in the stand and see what it looks like. Okay, so I, I already have a bunch of windows here. So I need to look at these carefully and see what's what. Live trees at age 20. So the 20 growing season is completed and live trees there are important. So this is my stand that's already been thin and grown now to age 20. Let me take a look at it by hitting this T button again. And sure enough, look at that. They cut down every fifth row and they cut down some trees in the rows they left up. So it did a good job. But now you can see, I, I only had two tables on here before. I had this table and I had this table. So it's generated several more tables for you. So it generated this live tree table and what you'll notice is it's identical to the table above it. So this table was just to tell me what was there right before thinning. Here's my thin tree table. So you have to pay attention to these titles that say either live trees or thin trees. A common mistake people make is they'll look at this and they'll say, oh no, I thinned my stand and now it only has 29 square feet per acre of basal area. That is not correct. This is just what was cut down and put on a log truck. And so you can see, if you look at it, we cut down and put 8.7 plus 4.1 plus 1.3. Uh, we went ahead and we put 14.1 tons on a log truck. If you needed 20, you would have had a hard time getting a logger to do this. So that's something that the model's telling us. That's something that's helpful. Then below that is live trees at age 15. So you can see this is what my stand looked like immediately after I thinned it. So the thinning gave me three tables, right? Before the thin, what was removed, because I checked that generate thinning report table. And then what did my stand look like right after the thin, before it gave me this final table growing it out to age 20. So here I can see what my post thin stand looks like. Remember my basal area was set, target was 70 square feet per acre and it got it pretty darn close. So we're in good shape there. So this is what's left after the thin. You can thin the stand again. So I've got this age 20 stand here. Again, it's basal area is only 95. I probably wouldn't realistically thin this. You can't row thin the stand a second time, right? You can only row thin it once. So your second thins are gonna be low thins with basal area targets. I'll use 65 square feet per acre this time and then I'll grow it out to age 26. So I'm making up arbitrary stuff here just to show you how the model works. And there you go. It spat out a bunch of tables for me yet again. And so if we'll look at what it did, it gave me this table right before the stand was thinned. It told me what it removed in this thinning. Okay, right here. Um, and then it gave me the, the live trees afterwards. And so as I look, actually, let me see what I did here. Yeah, see how I didn't check generate thinning report on that last one? I never generated the thinning report. So it actually didn't give me all those tables. It looks like it gave me the table at age 20 and then just the table at age 26. It didn't give me the three tables in between, so. Anyway, I know what my stand looks like uh, at age 26. P data is not very glitchy compared to most of these growth and yield models on the market, but you will occasionally see it have an error and reboot on you, um, as is what's happening to me right here right now. So this tells you two things, save your work as you're going through this and copy and paste it into Excel, save that Excel spreadsheet so you won't lose that stuff. And so here I can see my table here at the bottom. Um, it's kind of grayed out because it's uh, shutting down on me. But what it's given me is it's giving me the trees that are there at age 26. And it's giving me the total trees that are there now and everything I've removed in this most recent thinning, so the thin trees. And then it's adding that to the first thinning for that all thin row. Okay. Um, so let me go ahead and close the program. And usually it reboots pretty easily. You just open it right back up and it's good to go. And so here, let me pull it up here so you can see it. And there you go, the program's back up and running. So it's not like you have to reboot the computer or anything. But that was good that happened, so you can see an example. So save your work. And so if I wanted to re-simulate that stand, I would have to go through and put all my inputs back in here. But if I had saved that PTT file, I would be able to open that PTT file um, and my inputs would have come back, okay? So let me just take a real simple stand here on a fair site run it out to 50 years. I'm gonna leave all these presets in and I'm gonna grow it to age 25. I'm not even gonna add a title, okay. Just to give me a stand and stock table. So here's my stand and stock table of this 25 year old hypothetical stand. Now, see how there's a grow button and there's a start the stand button, initialize grow. There's no clear cut button here, right? So how do I clear cut this stand? Well, if I wanna clear cut this stand at age 35, look at that stand and stock table. That's exactly what I would be removing if I clear cut it right now. So there is no clear cut button because you can simply look at your stand right there, okay? Um, 
Uh, so you can see the back button will work sometimes. It doesn't always work and it won't work more than once usually. You can use that sometimes it'll help you. Let me show you an example of what I want to see you doing uh, for this lab. Um, so, you know, we're gonna grow out an existing stand. We're gonna use the HGT plantation that we used last year. So you're gonna fix your site information up so it matches that HGT stand. You're gonna fix your merchandising option up as directed in the lab handout. And then what you're gonna do is I'm gonna give you the data on the surviving number of trees per acre and their diameter distribution. And these are based on the data you all collected last week. I'm gonna make up numbers for right now just to show you how this works, but you're gonna to need to input that data. So you'll need to input the number of surviving trees per acre. I'm gonna put 545 in there, okay? You'll need to input the site index off the data I provide. I'm gonna put in 80 for right now. That's not the right number. Um, and then rotation length, put it longer than you need. Grow to age. Well, how old was that HGT stand right now? It was 12 years old. So I'm gonna plug 12 in there. I'm gonna title it the HGT stand. Okay, see how I can't manipulate trees per acre or spacing? It won't let you do that while growing an existing stand. It's gonna assume them. Age since planting 12 years. This is real important. I'm gonna get a window up where I can type in the number of trees in each diameter class next. You don't see that unless you check this adjust the diameter distribution manually box. So if you're not seeing that window, make sure you check that little box and you'll be able to input the percent hardwoods. I'll, I'll have that available for you calculated so you can input that. And then it brings up this window. If you don't get this window, remember, check the adjust diameter distribution manually box. You can see here from the last time I did this, it, it, it kept my number of trees in there and so I'm just going to adjust this hypothetical example. Uh, let me see here. And so it tells you what you can and can't have in there. So it's making me, I told it I have 545 trees per acre. It's making me assign all of them and no more than that. And so I keep inputting too many and so it's not happy with me, but there we go. So I've input all my trees per acre. This is not a realistic diameter distribution I've got here. Just hypothetical to show you how the model works, but I assigned all of them but it won't let you go forward until you've assigned all your trees to diameter classes. Okay, the other thing is the percent defective, and here's the problem with percent defective. You can see this is cleared. You have to re-enter this every time, unfortunately. So that's one quirk of the model uh, where you're gonna have to re-enter it each time. Okay, so you'll get used to punching that in over and over and over again as you run different model simula simulations here. Okay, so I'm gonna click okay. Uh, remember, I made all this data up. This is not real data, but if I had used real data, what this would represent is the HGT stand right now. So this is the first stand in stock table that you will need. Okay, so copy paste, fix the heading columns like I showed you earlier, done. That's the HGT stand now. You've estimated the stand in stock table for it, easy enough. And then you can continue growing it out. I've already shown you how this works, so you can continue doing that. And you can try multiple scenarios over and over and over again um, until you get to the right answer. Okay, so I believe that's everything that I need to show you uh, with this PTATA software. Um, so let me look through the other options. There, there are some more bells and whistles that this model does, but that's all we'll really need to know for our exercise today. Uh, let me go ahead and copy this over here just Looks like I closed Excel, so I want to show you an example um, of what we can do in Excel with this data. <clears throat> okay, so what I want to see in your HGT scenario, fix up this table like I showed you how to fix it up, and that's the first of four tables you're turning in, okay? And so that's our HGT stand now. Then continue trying different thinning regimes until you get to the end of your best rotation, and then at the end of that best rotation, turn in your final stand of stock table. But I'm gonna want you to modify it, okay? So I'm gonna want you to add several rows and you can add them here at the bottom, okay? So if you thin the stand once, you have your thinning row. If you thin the stand twice, I want you to include what you removed in thin one, what you removed in thin two, what you removed in the clear cut, okay? Um, and with these different rows, you're only including these in the HGT stand at the end of the rotation table. And all you really need to include is the, the volumes here, the pulpwood, the saw timber, and the chipping saw. 
And so you can copy these out of previous standard stock tables that PTATA output. Um, and so if I open PTATA up here, let me thin this stand here. So I'm going to thin it. I'm going to row and low thin it. I'm going to go every fifth row. I'm going to take my basal area down to 60. I'm making up numbers here. And then I'm going to grow up to H20. I'm going to generate thinning reports. OK. Well, here, if I go look at thin trees, this is what I removed in that first thin. So I can copy this row out here. This is what I cut down on that first thin. I'm copying just that row. I'm opening up Excel again. I'm going to paste it somewhere out of the way because it's going to put the header rows on it again for me. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it right here. So that's what I removed in my first thin. I'm going to go back to PTAIDA. We can see I grew it out to age 20. I'm going to thin it again. I'm going to thin the stand again. I'm going to go with a low thin. Uh, I'm going to put a basal layer of 110. I'm going to thin it down to 80 this time. Again, just being arbitrary. I'm going to grow it out to age 26. Not saying these are the right answers. This is just what I'm giving you. OK, and I click Generate Thinning Report. So here are my thin trees in this second thin. And it's going to be this thin row. All thin down here also includes the trees that I removed in my first thin. So I'm going to copy out thin here. And this is going to be, again, I'm going to paste it over here to the side out of the way. This is going to be what I removed in that second thin. So that's thin two. Well, what did I remove in my clear cut? That's going to be the end of my rotation. And so I grew this stand out to age 26. Here's my total. So this is what I grew over the whole rotation. So let me pull that up here. OK, so this is what I grew over the whole rotation. So that's what's left at the end. That's my clear cut. And you can see I've, you know, I've copied in one standard stock table when I started doing this to show you an example. But then I've actually done a simulation. So let me go ahead and move this over here. Delete all this other stuff out. You can see this total row is the same as my clear cut row. I pasted in separately. I'm going to delete it out. <clears throat> you know how to fix the column headers and everything there. OK. And so as I look at this, that's what I removed in thin one, thin two in the clear cut. So all I have to do is add in a total row. And guess what I can do? Equals sum. Adds it up. And so here's everything I grew over the whole rotation. Delete out that one. It doesn't make sense. And so there you go. Some of these don't make sense. Basal area, that doesn't really make sense. Volumes make sense. Trees breaker makes sense. Okay. Now, this went on the log truck in thin one. 30 tons of pulp wood, 3 tons of chip and saw, 0.8 tons of saw timber. Thin two, this is what went on the log truck. Thin, the clear cut, this is what went on the, my log truck. So over the whole rotation, all this went out on a log truck. So when I want to calculate mean annual increment, it's all the tons per acre that I removed, which is this, divided by the years it took me to do it. This was a 26-year rotation. My mean annual increment on this data I made up was 6.19. And we always need the units on mean annual increment, tons per acre per year. I'm typing this right here in Excel. But on your exercise, please put it in the table caption. There you go. So I think that's everything you'll need to know with how to use PTATA. This part confuses you all a fair bit, getting the thin one row, getting the thin two row. If you didn't do a second thin, you don't have this row, right? Getting the clear cut row, which is just the total row from your last standard stock table, and then making a new total row where you're adding all the thinnings to what you remove in the clear cut, and calculating mean annual increment from just the merchantable material, not this total column at the end of the rotation. So those are all common errors. OK, so I'm going to be providing you with a number of other resources for this lab, uh, but that's the background you need to know on PTA to software.